greatness of our God this morning, we rise and stand because we give God glory for one more day. And on first Sunday, on first Sunday, when we remember what God has done for us, we have a special praise of adoration and worship because the blood. to remember some of these names because they have asked us to pray and we believe in being faithful. Remember when you needed prayer? So we don't just put up the names because we just like name scrolling. No, these are brothers and sisters. And so if you don't mind, will you pray with me? Let's all pray together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, bless your holy name, God of the universe, great and mighty creator, God, the one who is and always will be good beyond measure, beyond our vocabulary. You are great and greatly to be praised. This day, oh God, we give you our worship. We showed up for that purpose. 
not the fashion show, not the a performance, not just because it's a good, beautiful building, but because you are our audience of one. And we thank you especially on this day when we recognize every first Sunday that you paid an awesome price for our salvation, for our redemption. Oh God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the blood that was shed at Calvary. Thank you that it still works. Thank you, God, that we have covering. And you don't deal with us according to our sin. Your word says that as far as the east is from the west, that's how far you've removed our sin from us. And we thank you, Lord, that your love is so great that you demonstrated, you commended your love while we were in our sin, Christ died for us. You didn't even wait for us to try to get a clue. Hallelujah, God, you were searching and seeking after us before we ever had you on our mind. And so we thank you this day that we can come because of the blood of Jesus boldly before your throne of grace and mercy and know that you receive us just as we are, but you love us so much you won't let us stay the same. So you're constantly working on us and working in us and working through us because of your power and your word. God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you today. Hallelujah. Thank you for every soul that Here's my voice right now. God, we thank you that you have grateful people in the cathedral and a part of our wheel of wherever family that we pause right now just to bless your name because you've been so good. You have been so kind, so patient, so gracious. Lord, we are blessed beyond measure, beyond what we deserve. You have done so many three things for us, we can't even count all the ways you've been good because you have done some things we didn't even know about when you blocked the hand of the enemy, when you frustrated the plan of the wicked, when you kept us from danger seen and unseen. God, we didn't even know we were in danger, but your hand was over our lives. You watched over our parents and our children and our grandchildren and our nieces and our nephews, and you snatched us from the grave. God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you that we are here one more day, one more chance to give you glory and honor and praise your holy name. It's not a performance, Lord, you know. We are grateful today. We bless your name. You didn't have to do it, but you did. You didn't have to let us live, but you did. You didn't have to see us through a pandemic, but you did. You didn't have to heal us, but you did. You didn't have to keep our minds, but you did. God, we are grateful today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless your name. Bless your holy name. Uh, we owe you our praise. We owe you our worship. It's the very least we can do when we consider your kindness to us. And so it takes all of this and some more because you're worthy, because there's nobody like you, because you're in a class all by yourself because you are the one true God. You are the living God. So we want you to be glorified in this place. We want you to have your way in this place. We want you to save souls in this place. We want you to deliver and heal and set free. We want you to stand in your preacher one more time and preach the word, oh God, till souls come to you. Snatch somebody from the grip of the enemy. Change some minds. Renew some hearts. Fill us with your spirit. Sing through the singers. Play through the musicians. Sing through the choir. Walk the aisles. Touch bodies in the name of Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, how we bless you. How we bless you. God, you know every need in this place, everyone who asks us to pray. And so, because you know better than we do what those names need, you know where they are. You know the person in this place right now who came seeking a word from you. They need, they, they, they need their hearts lifted. They've been broken. They've been heavy. You know the one who needs peace that surpasses all understanding. You know the one who has, has some issues, some, some difficult situations, and they need some wisdom and guidance and discernment. Oh, God, hear our prayer today. Speak to your people. 
comfort your people, the grieving hearts, the bereaved. Lord, we just trust you to minister to the knees in the house as only you can. And because we know you're faithful, because you've done it so many times in the past, because you keep on answering our prayers, you make us to hope in you. You make us to expect from you because you've been so faithful. God, we'll give you glory right now and thank you in advance. We'll bless your name right now and praise you right now because we know when your people come together, you don't need but two or three, and you said you're in the midst. And so we've gathered in your name to worship you, and now, God, we say you are welcome to do what you want to do and have your way in the name of Jesus. Let the power of your anointing not only fill this cathedral, but move through the streaming lines and wherever there's anybody that peeps in hears the word that goes forth in this place may there be a dynamic change and transformation by the power of your spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray this prayer with boldness we pray this prayer with confidence we pray this prayer on one accord believing that you have heard us and you will answer our prayer so we bless you in advance we praise you in advance in the mighty matchless and marvelous name of our one and only Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah and amen. In obedience to the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and based upon the profession of your faith in him we now baptize you our sister Kimora Lee Brooks in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen take me to the water to the great head of the church, even our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our sister Kayla Lene Maddox, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and based upon the profession of your faith in him we now baptize you our sister Avery Olivia Martin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen Bless 
to the great head of the church, even our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our sister, Alasia Marie Rylander, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ, and based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our sister Desiree Armand Tillis, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. to the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and based upon the profession of your faith in him we now baptize you our sister destiny Shane Tillis in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen Bless your destiny. to the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and based upon the profession of your faith in him we now baptize you our sister Randy Ronette Taylor in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen Bless you Randy Hallelujah Hallelujah
last woman who was baptized is the mother of the first young man who's being baptized, mother and son baptized together on this day. Praise God for that. In obedience to the great head of the church, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our brother Bryson Joseph Thibault, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Bless you, God. Bless you, man. Oh, I love you. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh, I love you. Yes, I do. Oh, I obedience to the great head of the church, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our brother Zion Malik Brooks, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Bless you, Zion. Bless you, man. to the great head of the church, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our brother Zion Malik Brooks, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Bless you, sir. to the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our brother Colby Ravi Henley, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Bless you, Colby.
my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If you are hungry, eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for your condemnation. About the other things, I will give instructions in my time. Let's pause for a moment of reflection. But if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Amen. Please remain standing for our morning hymn. Let's sing together on a hill.
Hallelujah. Oh, yes, I will. Someone's wondering why we're clinging to that cross. Because it was at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Anybody happy? And now I'm happy all the day. Happy because of Jesus. Happy because you're saved. If you're happy and you know it, why don't you give great praise to our great God who saved us, redeemed us, purchased us with a price. I'm happy because of what took place one Friday at the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. 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 This is the day that the Lord our God has made and we've come to rejoice. Anybody happy, anybody come to rejoice, to give great praise to a great God? Hallelujah. What a joy it is to greet you in that name that is above all names, even the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. in the beauty of holiness. We have come to do just that. On this Lord's Day, we are delighted that we are joined in worship by special guests, brothers and sisters who are worshiping with us for the very first time. If that's your reality, I'm going to ask that you would stand among us so that we might honor your presence in worship. If you're a first-time visitor to the Wheeler Avenue Church, would you stand, my brothers and sisters? Wow. Praise God. In the balcony, God bless you. Church family, you know it. Help me give a really warm Wheeler welcome to all of our first-time visitors. As you remain standing, we just want to serenade you in a moment, but right now we want to thank God for your presence among us on behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, and the man who started this church in his living room 60 years ago, our founding pastor emeritus, the Reverend Dr. William Alexander Lawson, whom we honor and salute our founder. Amen. On their behalf, indeed on behalf of the entirety of the church family known as Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, allow for me to express to each of you just how excited, delighted we are that you've opted to worship with us this Sunday. We're clear that you passed churches to get here. You had options as to where you might spend this day in worship. So we neither take it lightly nor for granted that you are here with us on the avenue. If you have a church home, please take back our warmest greetings and regards. Express to your pastor, your church family, just how excited we were to worship with you on this day. If you don't have a church home, however, we pray that you would truly be blessed by the entirety of this experience of worship. We want for you to make yourselves at home, for we would love to call you our sisters, our brothers in this family of faith and body of believers. Whatever your reality is, we are genuinely delighted that you've opted to worship with us this Sunday, and I can prove it to you right now. Watch this. Church family, show some love to our first-time friends. Amen. 
As you take your seat, I'm going to ask that you would do us a favor. Take out your, your cellular device and text visit WABC, one word, visit WABC to 77411. If you would text visit WABC to 77411, that's going to allow our pastor to write you a letter later on this week formally expressing his delight with your presence among us. And we would ensure that you know just how excited we were that you are among us on this Lord's Day. God bless you one and all. And we thank God for all of you who are worshiping with us virtually. To the Wheeler Wherever family, we honor your presence even wherever you find yourself as long as you're connected to us, we thank God that you are worshiping with us on this Lord's Day, and we pray that you have been and will continue to be blessed as a consequence of worshiping with us. If you're worshiping on Facebook or YouTube, and it's your very first time, please drop us a note, let us know, and the brothers and sisters in those chats will warmly welcome you and greet you with the love of our Savior, Jesus Christ, just to let you know that they're excited even about your virtual presence among us. The church family, help me thank God for the Wheeler Wherever family of faith. Amen. Now, it's, it's with joy that we come onto this campus and see each other and celebrate the Savior on this Lord's Day. It's a blessing to see all of you, my sisters, and all of you, my brothers, and we're going to serenade our first-time friends, but let someone know you love them with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at that neighbor and give them an elbow, give them a fist bump. Let them know you're happy to see them on this day as we welcome our first-time friends to the avenue. worship on the first Sunday of the eighth month of year 2022, will you show some sign wherever you are? Show some sign. It is good for us to be here, and we thank the God of our salvation for bringing us back to church in this eighth month of the year, and to God be the glory for all the wonderful things that our God has done, is doing, and will continue to do in each one of our lives. I reiterate the welcome from our executive pastor to all of those who are sharing with us for the first time, uh, for repetitive times, you're a part of our extended family, to our Wheeler Wherever family, God bless you one and all, and because the man of God is worthy of double honor, will you help me thank God for our founder, the Reverend Dr. William Alexander Lawson. How we praise God for you, sir. You are the man, and we thank God that you are with us today. To God be the glory for you. And we thank God for all of the wonderful things that God continues to do among us. We are certainly grateful uh, that we have come to this uh, eighth month. And now, as a consequence of that, we have some children returning to school. So we want to be in prayer for our young people as they begin to head to school. Yep. Yep. That was mostly parents and grandparents clapping. And we thank God for 
all the parents and the grandparents who are so ready to get these people out of their houses, out of their pockets, out of their cabinets, out of their pantries, out of their beds. Come on and thank God for these parents who are ready to get rid of these children. Good Lord, get out. Go give somebody else grief for eight hours a day. Amen. Praise the <laughs> We're praying for our children. May the Lord bless you real good as you go back to school. Next week is back to school Sunday, and so we'll be sending, especially our college students, off to school for the, those who are going for the first time. And so we're looking forward to that experience as the children head back to school. Won't you help me thank God? I think they've all returned for all of our newly baptized sisters and brothers. Praise the Lord for these who have gone into the waters of baptism. Amen. We get excited every first Sunday as we observe both of the ordinances of the church, first with baptism and then secondly uh, with the Lord's table. And we'll go to the table shortly here, and we're certainly grateful for all of that. Listen, because of the way our church has been organized and because we want our congregation to always have input and, and get the experience that they desire from Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church and all the information that they need to have, we have two church meetings per year. And the year-end church meeting, which happens on the last Monday of August, is coming up on the 29th of this month. It will be a virtual meeting, as has been our custom since the beginning of the pandemic. It has worked for us. Many more attend as a consequence of the virtual reality. So won't you share with us on the, first, the fifth Monday of this month, which will be the 29th of August at 7 p.m. Registration information will be made available. It is only to the membership of Wheeler Avenue, those who have formally joined our church. I know Understand that many Wheeler wherever members have not formally joined because of your other congregational attachments and affiliations. But for all those who have formally joined our church, we invite you to join with us in our virtual year in church meeting Monday, August 29th at 7 p.m. Now, child of God, I'm excited because every first Sunday we have the opportunity to celebrate with the very special people uh, who are excited about that month's reality. On this first Sunday of August, we celebrate every person born in the month of August, and if you're one of them, come on, love lady, just jump up and let's celebrate you. Yeah, if you're one of them, amen, 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 amen. I see you, Dr. Annette. That's my son, Marcus D. Cosby the second is celebrating. Our drum over there, Larry, he is trying to make sure everybody sees him. Stand up, Larry. No, stand up, Larry. Stand up, Larry. Okay, there you go. God bless you. And praise God for our cellist. That's Clark over there. Our cellist Clark is celebrating this month. So many others, so many others. Come on, let's sing happy birthday to all of these August babies. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Bless you one and all. Praise God for you. We celebrate with one of our Wheeler Wherever members, Dr. Carolyn Ann Knight is celebrating her birthday today, and we thank God for her and for all that she means to our church family. Deacon Robert Gatlin, are you here? Are you here this afternoon, Deacon Robert Gatlin? He's one of our deacons, longtime deacons, celebrating his 81st birthday today, and we thank God for him and for the blessing he has been to this church throughout the years. Well, it's offering time in the Lord's house, and we're excited to give back to God a portion of what God has given to us. Yes, yes, yes. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. But even more than that, the Bible says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Got a funny feeling that there's some cheerful givers at the Wheeler Avenue Church this morning, this afternoon, who are excited that God has first blessed you with all the resources with which you have been blessed. And then secondarily, you have the opportunity to be a blessing to the Lord's church and to the kingdom of God as it shall be expanded from this place into all the world where our witness will touch. And so I ask that you will remember first our responsibility to bring the tithe into the Lord's house. The tithe is the first 10% of our increase. The Bible says that it is holy unto the Lord. And so with our devices, we give our tithes. But beyond that is an offering that speaks to our level 
of appreciation to God for God's goodness in each one of our lives. We give our tithes and our offerings. We give our gifts to the building effort as we continue to ensure that we can do the work of eliminating the debt that has been incurred as a consequence of building this cathedral for the Lord. And then we give to missions and mercy as when we help other brothers and sisters who are in need and every single day of our church's life, we do that because of your generosity and your consistency to give. Our dutiful Courtesy Corps members are passing through the aisles. If you prefer to give a tangible paper donation, paper gift, we invite you to do that using these envelopes that these sisters and brothers are carrying. If you're giving digitally, as has been our custom for the majority of these last two years, two and a half years, we invite you to do that as well. But all of what we give shall be consecrated unto the Lord as we honor the Lord with our tithes, our offerings, our gifts to the building effort, and our gifts to missions and mercy, let us pray. Great God, how we love you and praise you for who you are and for all that you mean to us. We thank you for your goodness in each one of our lives. You have been great toward us. You've been loving and kind. You've been generous and faithful. So now we pray that you will make us to be more like you Help us to be generous. Help us to be faithful in our giving. Help us to honor you as your word has indicated so that you might continue to use us to expand the kingdom of God all around the world. Bless now each gift and each giver. Let no one lack as a consequence of what they give. We pray that you will return to your sons and daughters as you see fit so we will forever have the testimony of our elders that we can't beat God giving no matter how we try. Here's our gratitude. Thank you for victory in our finances. And we'll say it till we see it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on and let's give unto our God on this Sunday afternoon. Church, I'm excited to be a part of a church with such a magnificent music ministry. They've blessed us all day long in this service, and they're going to bless us even the more as they prepare us for the word of God. Won't you receive them with joy? as they prepare us for what is to come.
grateful that one Friday afternoon Jesus took your place at Calvary. And no telling where we would be if Jesus had not died for us. Somebody ought to go ahead and get happy if you gotta be the only one on your road to just go ahead and get happy. I feel you. You wanna praise him like I wanna praise him. We're not gonna stop anybody from praising him in this house. Come on and celebrate the fact that he died for you. That he took your place at Calvary. Somebody ought to rejoice, rejoice.
of God's people said amen. All of God's people said hallelujah. All of God's people say glory to God. Glory to God. Well, bless his high name. Let's, let's look into the word of God. And for these next few minutes, we just want to look into the word of God to see what God has to say to us as we continue this summer series on the classics, the parables of Jesus Christ. Certainly grateful to the preachers last month who preached for us from the parables and what a blessing they were. We want to continue our time together. Listen, let me do one other thing. While you're looking for Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4, Jabari Maurice Hunt, stand up. Jabari, where's Jabari? Jabari Hurt, Hurt. Jabari Maurice Hurt, where are you? Wave your hand at me, son. All right, he's all the way up there. He went to the waters of baptism this morning, and I called him by the wrong name. I want to make sure that he doesn't he doesn't feel slighted by that. But Jabari Maurice Hurt, we're excited for your new life in Christ. Excited about your new life in Christ. Yeah, you're excited too, aren't you? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glad to have him in our family. Amen. Yeah, we don't want to call anybody by the wrong name. Call the person by the name their mom and daddy gave them. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, beginning at verse 26. I'm reading from the New International Version, and this is what the word of the Lord says. He, meaning Jesus, also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, and then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. That's enough. Amen. Praise God for his holy word. For these moments that we spend together on this Sunday afternoon, I want to talk from the subject, the word is working. The word is working. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. I don't know about you, but I get excited about the word of God. For these several years of my ministry, I've often said things like the Bible says, because I get excited about the word of God. I love to hear the word of God proclaimed. I love to proclaim the word of God. I take great delight in saying what thus saith the Lord. I take great delight in knowing what the word says about itself, that even when the word of God is proclaimed, the Bible says that the word will never return unto God void. It always accomplishes what it was sent forth to accomplish. I love what the word says about itself. That's about the pro spoken word, the proclaimed word. But I still get excited just reading the written word. There are some passages that take on a brand new meaning in one's life once one has lived with the Lord for an extended period of time. There's a reason why we teach the children, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because you want them to know that they will be led by God if they choose to be led, that God will bless them, that God will provide for them. We want everyone to know that the Lord is my shepherd, but if you learned it many years ago, and you lean on it these years, you find out that that one verse in Psalm 23 takes on a whole new meaning once you live life for a little while. The written word becomes so much more inspiration to you. It gives you so much more edification. Every now and then, you ought to take some time to read the written word. It is in Psalm 119 where most of those 176 verses talk about the value of the word of God. It's in the Psalm 119 that the Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. 
It's right there in that psalm that the word of God says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I love what the word says about itself. I'm grateful that there is the spoken word, the proclaimed word, and these the privilege of going to the Lord's table, I'm grateful for the living word. His name is Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for Jesus because he is the one who secured my salvation. I don't know where I would be if Jesus had not died for me. I thank God for the living word who is Jesus Christ, the one who was born of a virgin Mary who lived for 33 years preaching and teaching, healing and forgiving for three years died one Friday, rose one Sunday, ascended to the Father, and one day he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. I love the written word. Anybody in here still love my Jesus? There is nothing like Jesus who gives to us the self-revelation of God. It is God manifesting himself in the public so that everyone could see a glimpse of the glory and grandeur of God. Listen to what the word of God says about about the living word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. When you look at Jesus, you're looking at God. When you look at Jesus, you're looking at the love of God on full display. When you look at Jesus, you're looking at the forgiveness of God walking about us. When you you look at Jesus, you get a picture of grace. You get a picture of goodness. You get a picture of the grandeur and glory of God. And so I'm excited about the word. It doesn't matter if it's the spoken word or if it's the written word or if it is the living word. The word of God gets me excited. And so when I look at Mark chapter 4 at verses 26 through 29, it is a beautiful expression of what the word is is able to do in the lives of those who take God at his word. When you look at Mark chapter 4 verses 26 through 29 are really an outgrowth of the original parable of the chapter. From verse 1 to verse 20 Jesus gives us a parable about the word of God and its effects in the lives of those who allow that word to work. It is the first of three parables on the word in Mark chapter 4. The third one comes directly after what I read to you today. From verse 30 all the way to the next several verses, you hear about the mustard seed and what Jesus does for those who are listening to him is give them a picture of what they're accustomed to. He uses agricultural language to help them understand the kingdom of God. He uses agricultural language to help them understand the mind of God, the will and the work of God in the world. He uses words like a sower went forth to sow. This farmer, they're accustomed to that because the people of that time thrived. They survived off of agriculture, taking care of the land. And so he speaks to them about a farmer who goes to sow some seed. He sows it into the ground, but when he scatters that seed, the first parable says that some just fell along the path, and the birds came and ate that up. And then some fell upon rocky or thorny ground, and it got choked up by the heat and the scorching of the sun. And then some of that seed fell on good ground. That's when the soil was able to receive it and nourish it and it produced a harvest. Now, scholars suggest from Jerry that out of that 
first parable comes the second parable in verse 26 where Jesus takes it to another level and begins to tell us about the seed. The seed has just been identified for us as the word of God. The soil is the receptivity of the individual and then the harvest is what is produced as a consequence of that word getting in you, that soil being good for you and that word producing what God intended for it to produce. And I came this afternoon to tell somebody that no matter who you are, if you sit around the word long enough, <laughs> the word is working. I need to help, some, help somebody in the cathedral this afternoon. If you get enough word in you, that word will effectuate a change in you so that you can never stay the same way you've always been. I may as well ask somebody one question that I'll probably ask you three more times. Is there anybody who can look back over your life and begin to testify the word is working? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The word, the word is working. I like this church family, Pastor Lawson. I enjoy this text because it seems to me that in these very few verses, Jesus teaches us some principles of the kingdom of God that we ought not miss. As a matter of fact, that's how he begins in verse 26. He says, the kingdom is like a man, a farmer, a sower who scatters seed. That's what the kingdom is like, that there is always a sower who sat, scatters seed. That's the spoken word. There's always somebody who is disseminating the seed to us and we need to look today at what I call the seed of the word. Yes, the seed of the word. It is intriguing to me, church family, that just some small, minute moment in time can effectuate such change over time that literally me standing here and talking to you for 30 minutes can change your life for 30 years. That literally Literally, me telling you what thus saith the Lord can radically modify and change the trajectory of your life so that you don't bust hell wide open, but you see God face to face. Is there anybody in church today who is grateful for the seed of the word? Yeah, the seed of the word. And I like it because the sower is sowing. And it seems to suggest, church family, that while the sower is sowing the seed, while the seed of the word is being granted, it is not just a one-time event, but it is a recurring effort, a recurring effort that the sower is constantly sowing. The picture here is not given as one who just scatters seed one time because one understands that sometimes... When you scatter seed, it does not get to the place where you needed it to be. Yeah, that's why this is the second of the three parables. The first parable says that when the sower is sowing, sometimes the seed falls along the road, along the path, and the birds come and get that. It literally means you weren't really paying attention while church was going on. You were doing a whole lot of other things. I just got somebody's attention. Yeah, you were doing a whole lot of other things while that man was up there preaching, and so you missed it, and the birds came and took that. Or it means that while that pre was preaching going on, you had so much distress and so much worry clouding your mind that it got choked out. You allowed all the stuff you got to go back home to, the stuff you got to go to work to tomorrow, all the things that are getting on your nerve choked out the word. So everybody on your row is waving their hand and you sitting there with your arms folded talking about, I can't believe I got to go back there tomorrow. There is some times that you allow the seed of the word to get choked out. That's why it's a recurring effort. There is the repetitiveness of the proclamation of the word of God. Oh, church family, that's why some people come to church early Sunday. Yeah. Because if you know you like you know you know you, you know you ain't getting everything on one Sunday. Is there anybody in here who can testify? The reason I've been coming to church all these years is because I need to hear what I need to hear on that day that's going to make my week a little bit better. Is there anybody who can testify? You've been doing this for decades and you have no intention of stopping because you don't know what you might do if you put in yourself in the wrong situation at the raw, you need some word to work. Yeah. 
So you got to have this recurring effort, the repetitiveness of the proclamation of the word, the constant sowing of the seed, the continual sowing of the seed. The music is good. It's got some word in it, but ain't nothing like when that preacher stands up, opens up the written word and conveys to you what thus saith the Lord. That's why I tell folks, this is not the time to go to sleep. This isn't because you don't know what's going to hit you by the time you get to Tuesday and Wednesday that the word is able to address. So look up and down your row. If they look like they're nodding off, just tap them a little. Don't hurt them. Don't hurt them. Just tap them a little bit. Say, wake it up because the man of God is preaching what thus said the Lord, the seed of the word. Seed of the word is scattered on a repetitive, recurring basis. It is a recurring effort. But please, may I tell you, it's not just a recurring effort. It is a rewarding effort. Oh, verse 26 says the man scatters seed. But verse 27 says, day and night, while the man was sleeping or awake, the word, the seed, started working. Okay, this row got it right here. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I said, while the sower was sleeping or awake, while the sower was in daytime or nighttime, something was happening in the soil that made the seed bring forth. That there's a reward on the other side of the sowing that it is producing something. Watch. And the sower has nothing to do with it. So it doesn't matter that that's your favorite preacher and you always want to hear that preacher. Once the word has been sown, once it gets in the soil, it becomes a supernatural experience. So, so this sower is sometimes sleep, sometimes awake. Sometimes it's daytime, sometimes it's nighttime. But the sower's work has already been done. Now it's time for the seed and the soil to work together. <laughs> and the supernatural is going to take place. Oh, child of God, there's somebody sitting real close to you who can testify. They can't tell you right now when that word started working, the way it started working in their life. But if you talk to them 20 years ago and now talk to them now, they will have to tell you that somewhere between sleeping and getting up, somewhere between eating and going Going back to bed, somewhere between going to work and coming home, the word started doing something supernatural. It was a sprout. It was some growth. I am not the same person I was in 2020 at the top of the pandemic. I'm not the same person I was in January. You better watch me because if the word keeps working on me, I'll be better in this month than I was in last month. The word is working. It's a rewarding experience. It's a rewarding experience. But you don't even know it's working. And it's working. You get to a point in your life and you look back and you say, when I start acting like that, when, when I start talking like that, I remember that if you had said that to me in 1995, they still be picking you up off the floor. If you had looked at me like that in 2015, I'd still be cussing you out. If you had acted like that with me in 2021, I'd still be telling you where to go and how to get there. Can I find somebody in this church who can thank God that this reward is taking place in your life? I need to find the fighters, the former fighters. I mean, you used to scrap. I need to find the one who took off your earrings and put Vaseline on your face. I need to find the voice. Hold my stuff. Hold my... Anybody in here can testify. You don't do that stuff no more. Because the word is working. I might think about it.
but the word is working. I considered it, but the word is working. As a matter of fact, I planned what I was going to do to you, but the word got hold to me and I scrapped the plan. I said, Glory to his name. Seed of the word. Night and day. When you're asleep or you're awake, it's becoming a sprout. It's growing. It's, it's budding. It's producing. That's, that's the seed of the word. But can I talk to you just a minute about the season of waiting? Because I've tried to intimate in these few minutes I've been talking that this is not an immediate process. Oh, hallelujah. This is a work in process. Because any agriculturalist, any farmer will tell you that when you plant a seed, inherent in the agricultural process is the season of waiting. Intrinsic to the process is the season of waiting. You don't plant a seed and get an apple tree overnight. You got to sit there, stand there, go somewhere and wait on the process to take place. There's some people who have some, some gardens in your backyard. And every day you just go out there and look to see if anything happens. And you just have to wait until what you have planted produces. I said you have to wait until what you have planted produces. That, that's why, as I told the first service, there's no such thing, I don't care how much we use the language, there's no such thing as a super saint because all of us are ever in process. I don't care how spiritual you think you are, you still got some growing to do. I should have had a 100% amen right there. I said, no matter how long you've been in church, church ain't still completely a part of you. You still got some stuff you need to iron out and work on and wrestle with. Is there anybody in here who heard the apostle Paul said, when I would do good, Evil is always present with me. Is there anybody, you may not say what you thinking, but you still thinking it. some witnesses in here who can testify you better be glad the Lord held my tongue but I thought it come on anybody in over right here you can testify I may not cuss like I used to but I still remember the word And so, you got to wait, day and night, sleeping and awake. You still have to wait on what you anticipate, what you are expecting. It is a waiting process. But the sower has sown and the seed has gone into the soil, and there is the expectation now that something beyond both sower and seed are going to have to work to make it happen. This speaks to me, church family, about the providence of God. So it went forth, so sowed the seed. It went into the soil, and only God knew how much it was going to yield. Stay with me, it's time to work a little harder. I said only God knew what it was going to yield, but God could see the end at the beginning. And God knew if you could endure the waiting process, you would be able to see a productivity and a profitability beyond your wildest imaginations. Oh, somebody ought to thank God that he sees the end at the beginning. Somebody ought to thank God that he made an investment in you when you were still jacked up. Somebody ought to thank God that he didn't take his hands off of you when you messed up after the last time you told him you'd never do it again. Can I find somebody in here that thanks God for the eye of God that sees all the way down the road? 
But while I'm thanking God for the providence of God, I likewise have to thank God for the patience of God. Because given that last example, when you told the Lord, Lord, if you get me out of this, I will never do that again. And then you did it anyway. And God said, I'm long suffering. I'm going to wait on you to let this word work because you're not there yet. You're not there yet, but I'm going to wait on you. Is there anybody who is grateful that God did not take his hand off of you after you messed up for the umpteenth time? Any, I'm not just talking about one accident, one misstep, one mistake. I'm talking about the folk who've been saved for years and you still doing silly stuff. Anybody in here can testify he's patient with us. So night and day, day and night, he's just waiting. Night and day, day and night, whether you sleep or awake, there's this patience, this, this patience of Jesus, or patience of God. I, and I like this. Somebody ought to be grateful that the Lord is patient with you. Is this thing still on? I said somebody at the cathedral ought to be grateful <laughs> that the Lord is patient with you. I'm going to let it get around the room. I ain't got no, nothing to do besides, besides go to dinner. I said, is there anybody in here who is grateful that the Lord didn't cut you off after your last sin? Anybody grateful that the Lord didn't discard you after your last empty promise? Anybody in here grateful for the patience of God? But while I'm talking about the patience of God and the providence of God, I got to say a word to you about the progression of God's people. I don't want you to come down too hard on yourself because the text shows to us the progression of the productivity of the seed. Watch. The progression. That, that when the seed goes into the soil, it begins to produce. But we're in the waiting season, so it doesn't produce always as quickly as you would like for it to produce. As a matter of fact, there are three stages of productivity in this parable. Jesus, first of all, tells them that there's a stalk that shows up. And you're not going to get too much grain from a stalk, if any. There's not much grain. You just see that something's happening. It ain't necessarily ready for consumption. But something has shifted. But then, the text says, it's not just the, the, the stalk. Then you see a head budding. Wait a minute. Something more is happening. There's progressive revelation. There's some progress to this thing. That what was just a stalk standing out there by itself, you could tell something had happened, but it wasn't producing anything. Now you can see this is about to become something if we stay around here in this soil with this seed long enough. And then after a while, the Bible says that there is a productivity to the thing, so much so that it is ready to be harvested. There is progression. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if I'm the only one at the Wheeler Avenue Church this afternoon who can testify that as I look back over my life, I have to testify I'm making progress. I told you I was going to ask you more than once. Is there anybody in here who can look back over your life and see that you're not the same somebody you once were? Every now and then you take a dip and go back the way you ain't supposed to be, but is there anybody who's ever brushed yourself off, got yourself back together, and got back to yourself, and you can testify you're making progress? Oh, thank God for progress. And the problem with the saints sometimes is that we have such expectation that people will be perfect that we don't have the kindness to walk with them through their progress. I 
said it, and before I take it back, I'll add more to it. I said the problem with the saints sometimes is that we have such expectation that people will be perfect just because they save, just because they come to church, just because they hear every Sunday. But we don't recognize now one of us got saved overnight. This seed does not produce overnight. It's an underground thing. It's an inside job that allows for progress to take place. I'm trying to make that daughter be the perfect Christian overnight. She got some seasons to grow through. I'm trying to make that son act as if he's never intended to make a mistake. He's human. He's going to make some mistakes. He's going through progress. Got to make some progress. Please stop rushing people into these titles in the church because you think you can look at them and tell what they're going to be. God is still working on them. They're still stalky right now. And stop rushing yourself, because if you keep rushing yourself, you'll beat yourself up because you made another mistake. You'll beat yourself up because you did what you said you weren't going to do. You'll stop coming to church because you don't believe God can use you. Oh, child of God, I wish we had anybody in here who's read about a brother named Peter. He was a disciple who all the way up until crucifixion day was making mistakes. But 50 days later, he made progress. Can't rush this. Just got to wait it out. Wait and see. God's got providence. He knows what's going to happen. You and I just have to wait it out. I said you got to wait it out. Stop telling you you're going to be a preacher. I see the mark on your forehead. Wait it out. Let the Lord do that work. Stop telling that girl, oh, you're going to be a deacon. I can see it. You're going to be the next one. on. No, wait it out. She may be doing stuff on Thursday night you would never believe. Wait it out. Can I be honest in a Christian church? Can we be honest? Just because you got called last month don't mean it's going to gonna pass the next month. Wait it out. Just because you taught them in Sunday school don't mean they're going to be the next Sunday school teacher. Wait it out. The waiting season. If we allow the season to work, God will help us to make progress because he's working underground. You may not be able to see it, but he's working underground. God is doing something internally that he would never be able to do if he had everybody looking at him and he's just trying to do it from an external perspective. God works from the inside out. We always trying to make Christians look like Christians from the outside in. Okay. All right, I got to close. I got to close. Can I give you one last thing? I'm grateful for the seed of the word. I'm grateful for the season of waiting, but can I tell you a little bit about the satisfaction of the work? Yeah, I, you, you know I'm a good news preacher. I try, to, I try to try to preach good news because the Bible is so full of good news. And the Bible says, by the time you get to verse 29, that after the season of waiting has come to an end, that the sower can now take his sickle, take, take that, that pruning device and cut it, and now the harvest has come. And now what we thought was just a seed has become a harvest for other folk to be blessed by. One, two, three, four. I'm so glad I came to work, so I don't mind working. Watch this. The Bible said that by the time the season of waiting has been expired. <laughs> then the harvester can go get from that field that which is not just to look good, a nice stalk and this head budding. No, now it can be so profitable that somebody else can be blessed as a consequence of what they've gone through. 
Oh, I've been trying to tell this church for many years, Pastor Lawson told you for many more, that you are not just blessed to hoard your blessings and walk around talking about how blessed you are and start looking at strutting around about how blessed you are. If you got some spaces in life that you've been able to occupy and you know it was only the Lord, it is not for you just to brag about it. It's so that you can bless somebody as a consequence of it. Is there anybody in here who has seen some growth and development in your life? across the years of your discipleship. If you know you've been blessed, you've got to reach back and be a blessing to somebody else. Is there anybody in here who can testify? I've grown too much to keep all my maturity to myself. I'm making too much advancement to act like I brought myself here and that's the only thing that's necessary. If you got a corner office, you ought to be looking for somebody to help get into the next corner office. If you got some clout in the community, you ought to be looking for somebody to help them to get the same kind of clout you have. If you know racism needs to be ended, you need to be saying something on your job and saying something in the community. If sexism is running rampant on your job, open up your mouth. The word of God has been put in you so that the Holy Ghost will give you power to open up your mouth and speak when you need to speak. Is there anybody in here who knows I can't keep all this to myself? If he's done this much for me, I I got to help somebody else. I need somebody in here to testify now. I've been entirely too blessed for me to keep all this to myself. I've been entirely too blessed to take all this to my grave. I need to make sure that somebody in my community, somebody on my block, somebody on my job, somebody on my pew is made better because God has hooked me up the way he has. If the word has worked in your life, it ought to be a witness through your life to somebody else who needs it. I need to find the folk in here who can testify. I made too much progress to sit down and cross my legs and act like that's all the Lord expects of me. He said, I'm going to take my sickle and I'm going to put you in spaces where you can be a blessing because you've been so abundantly blessed. Come here, black bourgeoisie. Don't you dare go back to those corporate offices. Don't you dare go back to that schoolhouse where you teach and not help somebody else to get a leg up in life. I need somebody in here who can testify. God's been amazing in my life and now I've got the opportunity at least open up my mouth and begin to tell somebody I didn't get here by myself. I didn't make it on my own. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. And I'm not talking about all the fully mature folk. I'm talking about some folk who can celebrate right where you are. Because there's some folk who've been in church for a long time. And we expect you to do it. But now I need to the folk, talk to the folk who's still in the stalky season. I need you to begin to testify. I'm not perfect, but I'm making progress. Is there anybody in here who can testify? I'm in that midway season right now. And although I still have some growing to do, I can look back over my life and begin to testify that God's been holding me and God's been keeping me. So I don't want to wait until harvest time. As a matter of fact, I need some folk who are still in the stalky season to give God a stalky shout. I need the folk in here who know you still may not know Chronicles from Corinthians, but you do love the Christ to go ahead and testify. I love him with everything that's within me. Now, I need some people who are growing up in God. You may even have a church title right now. I need you to go ahead and testify. I'm midway through this process, and I can see what the Lord has done. So please uh, be patient with me, because God is not through with me yet. But when God gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. I need you to understand that just because we're up here talking to you don't mean we're all the way at the right season of life. There's some folk up there in all that black who can testify. I'm still growing. I'm still maturing. That's why when they got finished singing that song, they sat down, opened up their Bible, and said, I need some word in my life. Said, I need to keep on maturing. I need to find the deacons in the room. You got on a uniform and a badge, but if the truth be told, you don't deserve that designation. You don't deserve that title. You still growing up in God. Where are the preachers now? Got your collar on your neck. Got your papers in your office.
office, but you know good and well, you don't deserve to be preaching. And if everybody knew all your business, they never want to listen to you. But they're not perfect. They're making progress. Can I find some pew partners now who can testify? I'm making progress. And when God chooses to use me for his glory, I'll say, here am I. Send me. I'll go here and there. Anybody in here who can help me close this sermon and testify? I'm going to shout in the season I'm in because the providence of God has me going farther than I could ever have imagined. The Bible says eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has an answer to the hearts of men and women. The things God has in store for those who love him. Now I need to poll the house. Is there anybody in that balcony who sure does love my God? Anybody on this first floor who can testify I love him with everything in my heart? Anybody in that choir stand? Say, I love him, I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him, I love him. Where are my preacher sisters and brothers who can testify? Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Well, if you love him, he's got plans for you. If you love him, he's not to with you yet. The Bible says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. This is not the end. He's still working. He's still developing. He's still producing. He's still making a way. Won't he do it? this much in me not to get a return on your investment you didn't grow me up this much for me to just sit here with my legs crossed and act like I'm supposed to be catered to anybody in here knows that the Lord is trying to get a return on his investment in your life I thank God for the spoken word. I get to hear it. Thank God for the living word. I get to see what God is thinking about. I thank God that that word is working in my life right now. And it doth not yet appear, as King James, what we shall be. But we know that when we see him, we will be like him. That's the whole purpose of this, so we can conform to the image of Jesus, who is the dear Son of God. We will be like him. Hallelujah. That's Bible right there. I'm encouraging you, my sister, encouraging you, my brother. Don't you give up this journey. Don't you shrink back. No one who puts their hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom. Stay on in here. Because that word is working. It ain't done. It's working. It's working. It's working. I'm done. I got to go. We got to go. I'm down. I'm out of time. Uh, the scholar suggests that that last part, when the harvest comes, that sickle, has nothing to do with us living down here. That's eschatological. You like that word, Pastor Lawson? eschatological that's the end times 
That's when Jesus comes back. So most of us, if not all of us, I, I dare say all of us, are somewhere between stalky and midway. Ain't none of us where we're supposed to be. We're works in progress. Works in progress. And so we just want to be ready when the harvester comes and gathers us all together at the end of time. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your word. Let it work on us. Let it work on us. Let it work on us. If you're able to stand where you stand, if you're not yet standing and you're able to stand where you stand all over the church. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, will you make us to be profitable for your glory? Produce in us what we could never have on our own. So even while we're sleeping, the word is working. Even while we're unconscious, you work in the night shift. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you for what you're doing in each one of our lives. May your word produce a harvest so that you can get all the glory. In Jesus' name, I pray that you'll save somebody this afternoon. I pray that you'll add to the church as only you can. Move on somebody's heart and somebody's life. About your Holy Spirit, will you convict somebody to say yes to the living word who is Jesus Christ? I ask it in the name that is above every name, the name Jesus. Somebody shout amen. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, one of my most important tasks as a Christian preacher is to invite somebody to a relationship to Jesus Christ. And if you're here on this Sunday afternoon, you say, Pastor, I need to know that Jesus about whom you've been preaching. I want to be a part of the family of God. I want to be a part of the family of faith. I want to be a part of this church. I believe that the Lord has led me to this church so I might grow and develop and mature so that I could produce for the glory of God. If you're here on this Sunday afternoon and you see these who are standing around with their arms extended, they are inviting you to come. They're inviting you to make your way this way. Whosoever will, let him let her come. If you're in that balcony, start walking down out of that section where you are. You'll see those arms extended moving you to the left or to the right. We invite you to come. If you're on this first floor, you'll see those arms extended to you. Just walk toward the direction that they send you and come on down this way. And we're going to celebrate that the word is working in your life. Here comes my first brother right there. Celebrate him this afternoon. Come on. This is your opportunity. This is your moment. Here comes that precious little girl. Bring her right on, please. Come on. They're moving. And while they're moving, we are celebrating that the word is working even right now. Follow those arms that are extended to you. I see you coming, my sisters. I see you coming, my brothers. The Lord be pleased. The Lord be praised. Come on, look at all these wonderful young people walking down that center aisle right there. Will you help me celebrate? Well, look at God. Look at God. They're coming from the balcony. We're going to keep clapping. We're going to keep rejoicing. We're going to keep celebrating that the Word is working. The Word is working. The Word is working. Bread of heaven, sing, beloved. Keep on coming, keep on coming. Sit down for glory. Many things you were on earth. A holy king. A carpenter. I see you coming from the balcony. God bless you. We'll wait on you. You're the living word. Bread of heaven. They're coming from this side of the balcony. Come right on, my dear friends. Sit down from glory. Many things you were on earth. Come on, we still have time to wait on you. A holy king. A carpenter. You are the living word. Awesome ruler. Come on down that center aisle. Bring that precious young one with you. Gentle redeemer. God with us, the living truth. What a friend. God bless you. You are the living word. Awesome ruler. Gentle redeemer. God with us, the living truth. And what a friend we have in you. You are the living That's what we call you.
through evangelism, look towards somebody and ask them, is the pastor waiting on you? Be serious about it. Ask them, is the pastor waiting on you? If they say no, say praise the Lord. If they say yes, say I can't walk for you, but I will walk with you. I walk down there with you, stand with you. If they don't say anything, tell them this is too serious, it's too critical. Everybody needs to answer for him or herself. If they don't answer, ask them again. Is the pastor waiting on you? Do you need to give your life to Jesus? Ask them, are you saved? Are you a member of a church where you, and you're growing where you're going? If you're growing, the word is working. Uh oh I want you to come on down this way. Come on, I see you moving. I see you moving. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. If you're growing where you're going, you don't need to move, but if you need a church where you can grow, come on, come on, come on. I see you. I see you. God bless you. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. Manger born, but on a tree. Precious people who have responded to the word that's at work in their lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Listen, I'm not going to even ask you to look back this way. There's so many of you, and I want you to have to bump into each other. I know there's some physical limitations. Please put that camera on me. Just look at the screen. To all of you who are sharing with us as new members to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, I want you to know that you are welcome here. We celebrate your new membership at this place where we believe the word is at work in our lives. To each of you, on behalf of our founder, the Reverend Dr. William Alexander Lawson, and every other member of our congregation, welcome to your new church home, Wheeler Avenue. Now, I need everybody to celebrate our newest members. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. All right, what's the plan? What's the plan? All right, we're going up these steps. That's Reverend Don. Reverend Don, wave your hand, please, one good time. Follow that beloved woman of God. Deacon Phil is walking right behind her. Follow that beloved man of God. And all of them are going right up those steps. Go right ahead. And uh, we're going to celebrate your new membership at the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I'm excited to serve as your pastor. We're excited to be your new family. Praise the Lord. God bless you, man. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. To all of you, welcome to the family. So glad you're here. Yeah, yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Hey, sis, I'm so glad you're here. Hey, my brother, God bless you. If you know you need to still be down here, come on, come on, come on. I got a funny feeling. Somebody needs to come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Who am I waiting for? Who am I waiting for? Don't let your professional visitor status stop you from coming. Been coming every week sitting in the same spot you know you need to make it official come on who are you come on come on come on where hey that one is coming come on no that's what we call you major born but on a tree praise the lord you died to save humanity you may be seated church family you 
rejoice over one sinner who comes to repentance. I just watched 50 or 60 folk walk out of this room. What do you think is happening in heaven? What do you think we ought to do on earth? Jesus was betrayed. He took his disciples into a large upper room that was furnished for the Jewish traditional meal of Passover, where they celebrated what God had done in their ancestors' lives. After the meal had been consumed, he gave to them two elements from that very same meal of bread and wine. He told them that the bread would represent his broken body and the wine would represent his shed blood. And as often as they would do that, they would show forth or remember his death until he comes again. Today, we do what the disciples, the followers of Jesus Christ have done since that night. We take of these elements of bread and wine and we eat and drink in remembrance of Jesus who is the Christ, the sacrificial Savior who gave of his life to redeem us from our sins. Before Jesus gave to them that bread and that wine, the Bible says that he blessed it, broke it, then gave it to his disciples. He said, eat of this by this bread is my broken body. He told them to drink all of the cup, what would represent his shed blood that both covers and cleanses all of our sins. We likewise will pray over these elements and our chairman of deacons, deacon, Brian Hicks is going to word that prayer, and as he prays, if you remember your scripture from this morning, from our response of scripture lesson, it said, examine yourself, and then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. While Chairman Hicks is praying, you should be praying likewise. Lord, make me better in August than I was in July. Lord, make me to be a better disciple. Fix me in the places that I'm broken. Let your word work in me afresh and anew so that I might represent you well in the days that are to come. Chairman Hicks, will you pray? And then we'll receive these elements of bread and wine. Church family, let us pray. Our God in heaven, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ, the creator, ruler, and sustainer of heaven and earth, we thank you, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come before your presence, worshiping you, praising your name, and witnessing the word at work. God, we thank you for the word as we witness today. So many lives are touched by that living word. Now, Father God, we pray, Father, that you would bless these elements here that represents the broken body of the living word. Father, we pray, Lord God, that you bless the wine that represents the blood that came streaming down so that we might be saved and cleansed, washed clean from the sins, Lord God, that held us apart from you. So God, bless these elements. 
bless the bread that represents the broken body and the wine that represents the shed blood of Jesus. It is in his name that we do pray with thanksgiving and great expectation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have not yet received the elements, we invite you to slip up your hand. These dutiful deacons are standing around the walls and they will serve you even now. If you have not yet received the elements, I see one hand here in the center of deacon blood, all the way down here, and two hands here. Others who need to lift your hands, I see one in the balcony. Deacon Davis is coming in your direction. And so in the center of the balcony, so in the center of the balcony, just leave your hand raised and we'll fight with you. to eat without all of our sisters and brothers being served. On that night when the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he instituted this meal. And as has been mentioned, Christians around the world engage in this very same meal with consistency because we are real clear and the Lord Jesus told us to remember his death because his death is what has saved us and the redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. So as we hold these elements in our hand today, we are reminded of the sacrificial atoning death of Jesus Christ. And as a body of believers, we with union, one with another, eat together. As we remember the broken body of Jesus Christ, let us eat together. The Bible declares that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. There's no cancellation of sin. The sin cannot be terminated without the shedding of blood. So Jesus told them in that room, listen, I'm, I'm going to shed my blood for you and this cup will be a symbol of that shed blood. 
So as we drink of it today, we are remembering that Jesus Christ allowed his blood to come from his head, his hands, his side, his feet. After they had whipped him all night on his back, all of that blood was shed to cover and wash away all of our sin. So we do not take this for granted. It's not just ritual. It's not just routine. This signifies relationship with the one who has redeemed us from our sin. And as you remember the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, let's drink the wine in communion. Gracious God, we thank you so much for loving us enough to give to us your one and only son who gave to us his one and only life. And now because we have accepted you and your son, we have a salvation that cannot be taken away. We give you praise for that today. And this Sunday afternoon, we remember what you have done for us on the cross of Calvary through your son and our savior, Jesus Christ. We remember that he died a shameful death so that we might live an everlasting life. So as we go through the month of August, we pray that we'll represent you better than we did in July. We pray that we'll be living sacrifices for you, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our spiritual act of worship. It's our reasonable service. And so we pray that you'll use us this month in a way that brings glory to your name. Let your word work in us so that the world might be better because you placed us in it. Let your word work in us so that when the final harvest comes, we'll be able to worship you and praise you in your presence throughout ceaseless ages. Let your word work in us, oh God, so we can look back and see just how far you brought us. And we thank you that the living word is at work even right now. And we give you glory for what you shall do, what you're planning to do, because your providence has taken us to a place where we could have never taken ourselves. And we thank you for the victory that is ours because we are yours. In the strong name that is above every name, even the name Jesus Christ, we pray this prayer with great thanksgiving and expectation. And all of God's people together said amen. Amen. As you are making your way from this place today. We're going to sing together as we leave, as is our custom. The Bible says that those disciples and Jesus sang together as they left that room departing to the Mount of Olives. I want you to make sure that you take that cup that from which you just drank and deposit it into the receptacles that our courtesy core members are holding. Please do not leave those cups in the seats. We want you to make sure that the cathedral remains clean, as, as clean as we can possibly keep it. So as you are led for, forth from this place, go in peace, my father's children, and may the peace of God be yours. Let's sing together as we leave from this place. God bless you, and may the peace of God be yours.